Hi all, this is Dr. Sage Breslin and this is Wisdom Wednesdays. You know, we've been talking about how to um, avoid burnout and how to resolve burnout and um, there are a lot of tips and tricks for doing so. But I wanted to speak to what happens when you really can't avoid maybe many burnout, right? The beginnings of burnout. How do we differentiate between what is burnout and what is exhaustion and what is depression and what is life? You know, sometimes I hold myself to a standard that's pretty high. Well, I, frankly, I'll hold other people to a pretty high standard as well. But it is because I hold myself to a pretty high standard. And I love to think of myself as a woman who can do almost anything. I think that when I got cancer, it uh, certainly knocked me off of my high horse and proved to me that I had to live in this human, that I had to um, take my human into consideration much more so than I'd done before. But I think as I learned to live with cancer, I have learned to embrace life right and and i think that's the goal is just embracing life living life living the best life i can despite the fact that i have this condition so i think over the last few weeks i have had life happen i've had things occur that i needed to respond to and as a clinician, I have had things that I needed to respond to. And as a coach, I've had things that I needed to respond to. And I noticed myself feeling more and more exhausted. And yet I kept the same schedule until I realized that I could hardly keep my eyes open, that I was really struggling. And I had to just lay down and consider me. Consider what does this look like in my human now? I had to consider what does this all mean? Do I, you know, oftentimes I think in the beginning, anytime I had a bad day or I had symptoms, I would say, oh my God, is the cancer growing? And then I think finally after a year, I realized, okay, it doesn't have to be that. Um, I love that my oncologist pointed out that a lot of my symptoms had to do with the chemotherapy, not the cancer, which I loved hearing. That was great news, but it's still something I have to consider. You know, there are chemo days that suck and there are other days that are easier. And yet I kept on stepping into my life as if I didn't have this condition. And again, I'm a pretty positive person and pretty optimistic, I think, um, but I still have this human, as we all do, right? And I notice that as these things came up in my life and all accumulated into a great big pile, despite the fact that I was dealing with them, I knew that the reality was I just needed to rest. I needed to give in. I needed to give more to myself. I needed to take more time for myself. Yesterday, I had a funny thing that happened. Um, well, I guess it wasn't funny at the moment, but um, my car needed to be serviced. And so I dropped off the car in the morning and I knew I had a dentist appointment. So it was my day off. Yay, day off, go to the dentist. So the shuttle took me over, you know, uh, two, two little towns away and I uh, had the dental appointment and then I knew I had a class, but I also had a walk back to work. Now, I hadn't really thought about how far it was. I just figured it was a walkable distance. So I put my class on in my ears and I walked back and it was by the sea. It was beautiful. I was really loving the experience. Right at the end, I realized I was hungry, which I don't get hungry very often. So that was awesome. And I thought, oh, great. Well, I'll get myself some food and that will be even better. So I make my, my way all the way back. I get some food. I go into my office and, you know, do that. And I take care of a few more things. Again, the accumulation doesn't stop. And then I realized, oh gosh, now I have another appointment. So I had to... 
uh, have my kid pick me up and take me to the other appointment, right? And then I go from the appointment to pick the car back up and take care of a, a few more things. And then I go home so I can be a mom. And I get to the end of the day, I cannot prop my eyes open. I am so exhausted that I was gonna make a list of chores for the kids to do. Like as a mom, that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> have your kids actually do stuff. I was, I was too tired to even make the list. So I get up this morning and one of my kids was so sweet, got up with the dog nice and early so I didn't have to wake up. And so I get up at eight o'clock in the morning and I think, oh my gosh, like number one, this is the first time in many weeks that I have not gotten up with the dog between four and five in the morning trying to help her figure out that that's not really the time to get up. But um, gosh, like eight hours of straight on sleep was extraordinary. And I woke up and felt like a million bucks and I made my list and I had my breakfast in bed and I, I got ready for my day and I was so excited. And then I wanted to look to see how far did I walk yesterday? Well, it was four miles and for those of you who walk and exercise with regularity, like that's nothing. I used to run half marathons. Okay, but for me, it was a lot. Um, usually like a long walk with the dog is two miles. So I thought, oh, well, there's a reason that I could not keep my eyes open. And you know what? It was perfect. It knocked me on my back and off my feet and out it really allowed me to get the kind of rest that I needed following a really, really tough week. So I was so grateful that I had to take my car in and I didn't have a car and I needed to walk or call somebody I really needed to walk because it allowed me to attend to my human. It allowed me also to attend to sort of the emotional repair that I needed to do from having to manage so many really painful things last week. And I got so lucky that the class that I was doing was a meditation class. And um, as you will know, I had a lot of trauma early on and the meditation was all about going back in time and embracing our younger selves and redoing like, if you could bring to that young self um, courage and honor and respect and beauty, like what would that be like? And I rocked the heck out of that. It was like the best walk I'd probably ever had because I was in a walking meditation and I could feel this younger version of me become glorious and fulfilled. And then the prompt was, you know, bring that part of you back. And I, I kind of watched her grow up inside me. And it uplifted me in a way that I desperately needed just again after the last couple of weeks. So my wisdom for the day is take time for you. You know, yeah, I got it. You're super women and super men and you can multitask. So can I, we still wear a human. You know, we still have this biological being that we have to deal with and we have emotions that will wear out our biological being and physical stuff that does. And just remember that, you know, it is super important to give back to yourself and to create that time for yourself so that you can heal and so that you can repair. And it isn't just sleep. Sometimes it's letting it course through your physical human so that as you hydrate and eliminate, by the time you get to sleep, you're actually getting real sleep rather than, you know, fretting all night long in that sort of not real sleep. So that's my wisdom for the day. I hope that you have a great day or evening wherever you are. This is Dr. Sage Breslin.